Welcome again to the NPTEL course on the future of manufacturing business and the role of additive manufacturing. I'm Chandrasekhar from Vipro 3D Bangalore and uh, along with my collaborator from IIT Madras, Professor R.K. Amit. We are presenting this program with primary focus on the future of manufacturing business and also the role of additive manufacturing in this metamorphosis. Fundamentally, in the initial classes, we understood the categorization of additive manufacturing technologies and uh, we got to describe the characteristics of these seven verticals encompassing extrusion, lamination, binder jetting, material jetting, vat polymerization, and powder bed fusion. Uh, and the special technique called directed energy deposition, which prime, which is connected with the repair and refurbishment scenario. Most of our conversations were connected with the metal additive manufacturing technology of uh, powder bed fusion, uh, with primarily on the uh, with the primary focus on laser powder bed fusion. And we also got to briefly discuss the technique of stereolithography which works on the principle of instantaneous curing of photosensitive polymers using lasers. In today's discussion, we will focus on two techniques or two processes which have found favor with numerous industrial contexts as well as individual uses. One is connected with extrusion technology, the other one is connected with VAT polymerization. It's very important to note that uh, these technologies, though they are primarily connected with non-metallic materials, that is, that their primary application is connected with thermoplastics, they have found an array of applications in uh, sectors connected with aerospace, defense, transportation, and healthcare specifically. And uh, these applications range from prototyping, part substitution, indirect use like a rapid tool, and also low volume production. The technology which is which has gained widespread acceptance among the user groups from academia, research labs, design groups, small scale units and also large industrial enterprises is the one which is based on the principle of extrusion. Uh, what is shown in this particular picture is the operational principle of this technology, which is widely known in the commercial context as the fused deposition modeling or FDM in short. The original patent is credited to Scott Crump who started uh, the, the premier AM company uh, called Stratasys. If you look at the operational principle of this extrusion based AM process, the defeat stock typically is in the form of a filament, a thermoplastic filament, and it's drawn into an extrusion by an extrusion head. The extrusion head consists of a driver gear, an idler and a stepper motor. Fundamentally the stepper motor uh, influences, the movement of the stepper motor influences the feed rate. The thermoplastic filament which is being drawn by the extrusion head enters the hot end and it is drawn out in a liquefied state through a nozzle and the deposition of the material which is being delivered through the nozzle happens on a platform which is also known as print bed and the print bed has got provision for movement in the z direction and the cartridge consisting of the extrusion unit and the uh, uh, nozzle has got the provision to move in the XY direction. I am talking about typical configuration 
which is illustrated here. Indeed, there is going to be a pressure drop. There is a pressure drop across the extruder and uh, the pressure drop depends on the viscous properties of the fluid, geometry of the nozzle and uh, the geometry or the configuration of the liquid liquefied. There are two popular methods of extrusion. One is the direct extrusion, where is the, wherein the extrusion element is directly connected to the, the nozzle uh, or hot end. The other one, which is known by the name Bowden extrusion, and this extrusion head is mounted on the machine frame. Uh, there are certain pros and cons uh, of each of this configuration. In case of direct extrusion, the retraction response of the extruding unit is much better, but it has got one inherent disadvantage. The mass of this entire unit consisting of extruder as well as the hot end is much higher compared to the Bowden unit. And because of this higher mass or higher inertia, we have got problems connected with vibration. And this may in turn adversely impact the accuracy, especially if you are talking about high speed printing. The Bowden extrusion has got inherent advantage of uh, lower mass and hence high speed printing is facilitated. But there is a problem since the filament has to move through this cable. Many materials, including the abrasive materials, cannot be handled in the Bowden extrusion. And the primary application connected with the FDM process in the initial stages is, was largely confined to design communication. The example what I have shown in this specific slide is relevant to an aero engine uh, accessory drive gearbox housing. As you can see, the shape is extremely complex. The realization of the actual part, which is made out of aluminium alloys or magnesium alloys, takes extraordinarily long time in the conventional context. In, the, in this specific case, uh, after the concept was made ready, immediately the concept was converted into full-scale FDM replica to facilitate design communication among the groups. Uh, it was also translated into a stereolithography model for enabling experimental tests. There are any number of applications of this particular technology connected with assembly integration studies and the original material which was synonymous with the extrusion technology was and is is ABS material, a thermoplastic material uh, and uh, uh, ABS stands for acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. Uh, it is an engineering plastic which has got adequate uh, yield strength, good elongation at break, adequate uh, modulus. So many applications connected with the design visualization and assembly trials are greatly facilitated by this workhorse material of extrusion technology. This is one of the case studies corresponding to <coughs> assembly integration of the entire aero gas turbine engine. Uh, you can see in this slide the mock unit of a scaled down unit of aero gas turbine engine consisting of the fan module, the compressor, the combustor, the turbine, exhaust, the casing, several line replacement units. Uh, they were all made using ABS parts and assembled together. And fundamentally, the scale down assembly was extremely useful, not only in terms of design communication,
but it was also used as a tool as a facilitator for optimizing the location of uh, lr use the other material which has become synonymous as the workhorse material of the extrusion technology is pla pla stands for polyactic acid uh, it can be made uh, from starch and uh, it's highly affordable and uh, the pla parts come with adequate stiffness and good detailing and if you look at the strength and yield properties they are adequate enough to take care of the prototyping and also to take care of the testing especially in those situations and contexts where the max stress could be limited to less than 30 mega pascal in this specific case what is shown as the direct application of a pla fdm uses is fabrication of a transmission gear assembly of an ornithopter a mechanical bird and fundamentally this mechanism as assembly is responsible for converting the rotary motion into the flapping motion of ornithopter so uh, because of the affordability of this material and because of the adequate strength which is associated with pla the technology extrusion based additive manufacturing technology has become a favorite among the design groups startups who are into the de development of devices and most importantly the academia which are interested in conducting optimization studies on new products so in this specific case about half a dozen variants of the mechanisms were designed developed and tested in less than 2 months time without the usage of time consuming injection molding options by virtue of integrating the extrusion based additive manufacturing into the development of ornithopters this is one more example connected with the drones a fixed wing drone and uh, what is notable in this case is high strength offered by the fdm material called ultem uh, developed by stratasys the yield strength is close to 70 mega pascal and it has got necessary notched impact characteristic also in this case the structural component connected with a fixed wing aircraft or drone was realized out of ultem and all the electronics including the motors and the sensors were directly integrated into this fdm structure and the resultant drone was successfully flown in the field trials so the new year materials have enabled the parts which come from extrusion manufacturing not to be confined only to the prototyping but also for field applications uh, similar to the one which i have shown in the slide but it's very important to understand that there are several parameters which impact the strength of the part the parameters could be connected with the build process like uh, raster width the air gaps the angle the contour width and the gap the infill density that you use and the layer thickness it's several studies have been conducted by contemporary research groups through various methodologies so as to improve the strength of the part corresponding to the usage of abs nylon polycarbonate and pla material in extrusion additive manufacturing systems it's also very important to plan the support structures and uh, some of the um, characteristics of parts are also dependent upon the the characteristics of the build system 
the type of exposure that we use, the nozzle diameter, and uh, whether there is a provision for preheating the build plate. So all these parameters connected with the build system also influence the um, properties and uh, performance characteristics of the FDM parts. It's uh, important to consider the extent of post-processing. Uh, to make these parts usable for end-use context, uh, significant amount of effort is time and uh, effort is required corresponding to improving the surface finish. And uh, in some cases, you may have to resort to secondary processes like plating and micro peening to improve the surface quality and uh, to improve the surface integrity. Incidentally, many parts uh, made out of ABS, when they are used for aesthetic purposes in the context of industrial design, they are subjected to electroless plating procedures by virtue of which nickel, copper, thin foils of nickel and copper are plated on the surface to improve the aesthetics. Uh, the, in case of the extrusion based additive manufacturing, it's important to consider a phenomena called stringing or unwanted woozing of the material out of the nozzle. So the speed of the extrusion head is controlled in such a manner that the woozing of the molten filament uh, through the hot end doesn't lead to the creation of unwanted structures called strings. The other important consideration is about support structures. In all those in instances where you have got thin overhang features, it becomes imperative to make use of support structures. But thanks to water soluble support structures which have been brought to the forefront by Stratasys, removal of the supports no longer is a functional issue. So fundamentally, in these cases, the extrusion-based AM systems are provided with two print heads, one corresponding to the build material, other one corresponding to the support material. In all those spatial locations where support structures need to be present, the supports are deposited out of water-soluble materials and these support structures are removed without uh, uh, considerable effort in the post-processing stage. The world of materials connected with uh, extrusion-based additive manufacturing has seen several innovations. Uh, the current list is pretty impressive, ranging from thermoplastic polyurethanes to high impact polystyrenes, to nylons, the carbon filled nylons, especially in case of high strength to weight applications that are necessary in tooling context, the polycarbonates, polyether ketone ketone, popularly known as uh, PEC, and polyether ether ketone. All these materials have enabled the scope of applications to get enlarged. I would like to pick up some applications uh, in the automotive sector to illustrate the importance of the wide range of materials in terms of accelerating the use of the additive manufactured parts in conventional context. What you see in this case is the sand casting of an automotive housing. The CAD model of the same is indicated here. I think the longest linear dimension is about uh, 
680 mm. If in a conventional scenario, this part could have been realized through carpentry and it could have taken easily about uh, 12 to 16 weeks. But thanks to the introduction of extrusion based additive manufacturing, the pattern in this case has been realized with a modular approach. You can see the bottom and top hulls here and uh, the entire fabrication was done in less than two weeks time and uh, the casting of the automotive housing was done using the engineering material of the need by using the master patterns that are realized through ABS material. So this is an indirect usage of additive manufacturing wherein you recognize the fact that the eventual part needs to be in a certain engineering material and uh, the pattern is made out of thermoplastic material either you can use this pattern uh, in, in, in the context of uh, sand casting as is illustrated in this case or it can also be used for in a sacrificial manner in the context of investment casting. So the applications of this kind which are plentiful in uh, industrial context are known as the rapid tooling cases wherein you are making use of the parts indirectly for meeting the functional needs. Here is an example corresponding to the packaging trials of an electronic device with FDM parts. As you can see here, the small uh, electronic device with an outer diameter of about uh, 65 mm and a wall thickness of about 3 mm consists of several integral parts and including the heat pipes including the PCB mounts. So all these components uh, from the CAD are directly translated into ABS parts and uh, these parts are assembled and were tested not only to check the assembly integrity in this specific case one more important functional application which was fulfilled was availability of the cooling air in such a way that the max temperature within this module doesn't cross stipulated limits. So this particular uh, mock assembly was used repeatedly by introducing certain refinements in the parts and uh, in an experimental rig the trials were conducted in terms of ensuring the availability of the cooling air for the electronic circuitry. The, this busy slide shows cases the choice of materials that are prevalent in the world of extrusion based additive manufacturing. Right on the top you see the thermoplastic polymers and high strength plastics uh, and uh, the other one is the polymer matrix composites could be GFRP or CFRP. Uh, they are used in the aeronauticals and automotive sectors for structural applications. The ceramic slurries and clays based on alumina and zirconia kind of solutions. They are widely used in dental in dentistry as well as for the purposes of insulation objects. The metal polymer composites providing solutions based on pure metals like copper, cobalt and also alloys, high performance super alloys like in kernel 718, in kernel 625, aluminum 6061, uh, TIE 6242 uh, have actually enabled the parts from extrusion based additive manufacturing to be directly used for tooling applications, for fixture development and also for series production. 
some of the esoteric applications of this particular technology are connected with food industry uh, even chocolate solutions or chocolate slurries uh, have been tried out to make bespoke chocolates using the technology of extrusion and in the recent times we have also seen flurry of activities connected with bioprinting and uh, fabrication of minute scaffold structures using bio inks so the 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 entire uh, facilitation of the applications in context ranging from bio sector to consumer goods to aeronautical to automotive and medical have been propelled to some extent by the technology related improvements and to a large extent by the material innovations and here is an interesting case study connected with uh, sheet metal forming using fdm tooling uh this is one of the favorite uh, applications in the world of uh, auto sector for making parts such as engine cradle radiator and instrument panel support beams and suspension components and in few contexts it has also been used for making the airframe components the sheet metals uh, with a thickness ranging from almost half mm to 2.5 mm out of aluminum alloys steels titaniums and nickel alloys are formed using the am tooling and it has been reported that the am tooling was able to sustain pressures up to 70 megapascal and up to 600 cycles of forming with no discernible surface degradation incidentally the materials like polycarbonate and ultem provide one more functional advantage they do not adhere to metal so they have got inherent lubricity so especially in case of low volume manufacturing it has been proven uh, that there are several advantages connected with the cost reduction and time compression by using the forming tools through materials like uh, polycarbonate and ultem based on the extrusion additive manufacturing technology the other materials which are connected with uh, extrusion process are the thermoplastic polyurethanes uh, similar to what you see in the insert diagram here Uh, they are typically used in case of flexible hoses and ducts and uh, the elongation at break is close to about uh, 500 percentage and uh, the uh, handling of this th thermoplastic polyurethanes is slightly different compared to more viscous materials and uh, it has been proven in multiple contexts that uh, the making of customized solutions connected with flexible hoses uh, can be done by integrating tpu into extrusion based additive manufacturing pedg has also been uh, configured for the extrusion based additive manufacturing and there are special materials which are connected with the flame retardant performance as well as electrical housings using the Uh, poly ethermide and asa options one important application which has found favor with uh, orthopedic surgeons as well as uh, maxillofacial surgeons is about uh, developing patient specific tools using the technology of extrusion based additive manufacturing in this case the data the the input data 
could come from an X-ray or a CT scan and using special purpose pre-processing software this data is converted into a CAD model a 3D CAD model um, and uh, and this data in turn is used as the input for 3D printing on an, an, an uh, extrusion based additive manufacturing system it has been proved uh, in different contexts that development of patient specific surgical tools and planning of implants are greatly facilitated because of these parts which come out of extrusion based additive manufacturing system and they can also be sterilized they can be uh, used as a, um, a for the purpose of patient communication also communication with the peer uh, medical practitioners it's uh, important to understand that the configuration of the extrusion based additive manufacturing system has also undergone certain changes certain refinements in the recent times the original configuration was based on the cartesian model so we had the extrusion head moving across or along the orthogonal axis but in course of time we had new configuration called the delta configuration uh, wherein the typically the bill plate is stationary it doesn't move in the z direction and uh, if you see uh, it's circular in its shape and the extrusion head is mounted on three articulating arms so fundamentally the extrusion head can move in any direction um, in XYZ space and the Z height in this specific configuration is substantially higher compared to the configuration connected with Cartesian coordinate system. We have also seen the emergence of polar 3D printer wherein just need to use two engines one connected with R other one connected with theta so in case of 3d printers which are based on polar configuration uh, you have a rotary table and uh, you got a gantry system which moves in a uh, radial direction so the advantage of the polar uh, coordinate based 3d printer is that you just need to use only two engines instead of three engines that are synonymous with the cartesian 3d printer the simplest form of uh, extrusion based additive manufacturing is the usage of a robotic arm uh, so a single robotic arm uh, with uh, mobility in the xyz direction and connected with an extrusion source is found to be adequate enough for realization of the parts uh, needless to mention in this case the surface finish as well as the part fidelity will be significantly inferior to what you see in case of uh, systems that operate on Cartesian uh, coordinates. There are also other variants of the process. Some, in some of the cases, the feedstock comes in the form of rod. So it's not a filament, but it's a rod. So to push the rod, uh, we need to use greater amount of force maybe uh, this is facilitated by piston or rollers in other cases we have also seen uses of pellets the pellets are small granules of thermoplastic they are uh, driven to the nozzle by a rotating screw or a piston and the entire unit is contained within an extrusion barrel so the whole extrusion barrel is heated along with the nozzle but the advantage of this particular uh, variant is the cost of pellets is significantly less compared to the cost of the filaments and hence uh, realization of large structures becomes economical it has been reported that 
pedestrian bridges uh, with a length of almost 24 meters with a width of almost 4 meters have been successfully printed by hot extrusion of pillars. The other uh, opposite of hot extrusion of the pellets is the cold extrusion of slurries. The, the feedstock in this case is a viscous suspension of solid particles, solid powder particles and uh, it could be ceramic slurry, it could be liquid chocolate or clay and you don't make use of hot nozzle in this case and after the material is deposited uh, we need to wait for a certain time for the drying to happen. The technology of extrusion based additive manufacturing has uh, seen several new phenomena emerging and one of the most important thing is the development of free and open source hardware. Dr. Adrian Boyer from University of Bath started this movement called RepRap in 2014. Fundamentally, RepRap stands for self-replicating rapid prototyping systems. So the, the entire configuration uh, corresponding to the hardware and software of this extrusion-based additive manufacturing system saw active contribution of volunteers from several parts of the world. And this particular model also got uh, repeated again in the projects connected with the Fab at Home and Lulzbot 3D printer and they were all associated with open source hardware projects for DIV 3D printers. And uh, these movements connected with open source hardware has led to emergence of several startups and also to reduction in the prices of the extrusion based EM systems in a significant manner, uh, so much so that there are tens of thousands of extrusion based additive manufacturing systems that are operating currently in uh, high schools, in elementary schools and also in the tinkering labs uh, spread across the length and width of the country. Coming to the industrial context, one important uh, innovation which has marked the emergence of the uses of metal polymer composite parts uh, needs our attention. In this case, the metal could be any of the choices like bronze, copper, nickel, aluminum, inconel, titanium as I described a few minutes ago. And uh, the metal polymer composite is extruded akin to the process that I have described already and it requires industry grade printers which have got provision for operations at slightly high at higher temperature and in many of the cases even the print bed on which the part is printed is preheated. So what happens in handling metal polymer composite parts is the realization of a green part at the end of the extrusion cycle. So the green part is not dimensionally stable and the green part consists of nearly 20% binder and 80% approximately about 80% metallic material and it has to be subjected to catalytic debinding so that we can get rid of the binder in the quickest turnaround time. The strength of the part may not see significant improvement, but after the catalytic debinding, what you get a br is a brown part which is dimensionally stable. And the brown part is subjected to sintering, and uh, post sintering, it is subjected to series of post-processing of operations making the part amenable for functional applications. So important to note that in this case the nozzle temperature could be as high as 250 degrees centigrade 
and uh, the print speeds could be limited and the print bed temperature uh, need to be somewhere between 50 degrees centigrade to 80 degrees centigrade and we have to deploy 100% infill density but after going through the necessary post-processing operations of debinding and sintering what you get are the metallic parts in this specific case the properties corresponding to SS316 are shown as you can easily infer the tensile strength, the yield strength and the elongation and the impact characteristics of what you get through a metal polymer based composite are adequate enough for meeting the needs of wide array of industrial usages. It's because of the phenomena of this kind uh, that there are many instances which are emerging in the aeronautical, automotive, manufacturing and tooling sectors wherein the low volume batch production is being attempted through industry grade 3D printers. What do you mean by industry 3D grade 3D printers? Typically, if you are talking about the desktop 3D printers, the build envelope is limited to about 250 mm in XYZ directions. The accuracy could be about 1 to 1.5 percent and layer thickness is just limited to about 0.2 mm. So all these parameters contribute to two important characteristics. The accuracy could be limited and the throughput could also be limited. But if you look at the industrial 3D printers, similar to the ones which I have shown in this slide as the options, then the parts could be built with higher layer thickness and the build envelope in sometimes could be as high as about a meter in XYZ directions. The accuracy uh, could significantly increase to about 0.15% uh, to 0.2% which are commensurate with the expectations of a designable engineering user. So it has been observed that low volume batch production in uh, manufacturing and tooling industry has been facilitated with the parts made out of nylon and polycarbonate using these industry grade 3D printers. One more technology which has been used with a similar kind of felicity for low volume batch production in the context of dentistry and uh, hearing aid industry is the digital light processing. So uh, we, we did spend some time in understanding the operational principle of stereolithography. In case of stereolithography, what happens is the CAD data governs the movement of a UV laser beam on the surface of photosensitive polymer which is put in a vat and uh, because of the interaction between the laser beam and uh, the UV curable resin, the resin undergoes instantaneous transformation from liquid phase to solid phase. But the fundamental element in this case happens to be a laser. In recent times, the, the, the process of stereolithography has been substituted by a technology called digital light processing. What do you mean by digital light processing is um, there is no uses of any laser beam. You have got a light source and you have got micro mirror assemblies. And fundamentally, the light source, uh, it was developed way back in 1987 by Texas Instruments. It consists of tens of thousands of micro mirrors of the dimensions of uh, 8 by 8 microns, which are arranged in a rectangular array. The, each of these micro mirrors is pivoted. And uh, depending upon the electrostatic attraction, it can be made to swivel by about 12 degrees in either direction and uh, the movement of this micro mirror fundamentally leads to the 
curing of that small area which is in the line of focus. So the introduction of this technology of the micro mirrors has led to an emergence of new process of VAT polymerization and this process is known as digital light prints processing. The other option is connected with LCDs. Uh, in this case, you've got a backlight, there is a polarizer, you've got analyzer and between the polarizer and analyzer you've got a quarter wave plate. Fundamentally through optical elements you are able to translate the movement uh, of the, the, uh, the light wave in such a manner that the light is enabled to pass only in those zones where you want the, the polymerization to happen. In all other instances, the analyzer cuts off the signal. And uh, there are no moving parts. The entire motion of the light waves is only enabled through optical elements. This particular technology, which is devoid of the usage of laser beams and moving elements, has led to mass customization of the products in medical industry, both for uh, dentistry as well as the hearing aids. Typically, um, in a dental context, uh, the, the data is generated by uses of an intraoral scanner device and uh, you have got special purpose dental CAD software which convert the scan, scan data into a CAD model. So when you do the necessary pre-processing, we set up parameters such as exposure time and the layer thickness and uh, if fundamentally let's say the part is about 100 mm tall and if you use a layer thickness of about 50 microns, you are talking about 2000 layers. But unlike the case of stereolithography where the laser beam has to move discreetly point to point, your entire layer is exposed at one go. So the, the processing time is phenomenally compressed. So we are able to make parts of this kind in few hours. So the post printing on a DLP system, uh, cleaning of the parts has to be done in terms of removing the support structures, in terms of uh, getting rid of uh, uncured resin, if any, and then the parts are ready for applications in dental context connected with the uh, both maxillofacial applications as well as orthodontic uh, aligners. As you have seen in this specific case, uh, a part with a show D hardness of about 80 uh, has been realized in less than 13 hours of time. What has been remarkable in extending the usage of this technology is connected with mass personalization or mass customization in case of hearing aid industries. You can see in this case, in just about six hours time, dozens of these mass customized casings for hearing aid industry have been realized through the application of digital light processing and successfully used in such a way that the eventual customer gets an experience of superior fitment. So the applications of this kind have come to the forefront in a significant manner, um, both in the national and uh, international context. And several and several uh, several models uh, connected with uh, gifting solutions, packaging solutions, and device solutions are taking advantage of making these parts out of the technologies of 
digital light processing for providing mass for mass customized solutions so uh, i just described the applications of two important technologies uh, connected with plastic materials in the world of additive manufacturing one uh, connected with extrusion process other one connected with uh, vat polymerization and the purpose of uh, describing these two processes and the pertinent applications is to showcase the possibility of new business models that are based on the digital manufacturing technologies in providing timely solutions and delivering the products at the point of care without the tooling penalties that are associated with conventional manufacturing thank you so much